Section 2.1 is on the derivative and the slope of a graph. So in this section, we're going to learn how to identify tangent lines to the graph at a point, approximate the slopes of tangent lines to the graphs at a point, use the limit definition to find the slopes of a graph at a point, and use the definition of, or sorry, use the limit definition to find derivatives of functions. We're going to describe the relationship between differentiability and continuity. All right, so all of that sounds like a lot, but it's really one primary, primary thing that we're learning, and it's how to find a derivative using the definition of derivative. And what a derivative is, is a slope of a tangent line. So what the heck is a tangent line? Well, let's start off with a secant line. All of this comes from slope. A slope is a rate of change. You guys know slope as change in y over change in x, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, but that's really what we're looking at is rates of change. We want to know when are things increasing, rates of change being positive, when are things decreasing, rates of change or slopes being negative. So we're really going to be analyzing a lot of rates of change slopes uh, in, throughout this semester. We're going to know them as something else. We're going to learn them as something called a derivative, but that'll be shortly. Let's start off with, with just a very basic. What, what if I said find the slope between two points? Well, first of all, what's the line that connects two points? The line that connects two points is called the secant line. So a secant line is the line that goes through two points. I labeled these points on the graph, x1, y1, x2, y1, and, or x2, y2. And if we wanted to find the equation of that secant line, remember to find the equation of a line, we need two things. We need a slope and we find the point. So how do you find the equation of a secant line? The first thing you do is you find that slope. Remember the slope formula being y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. The second thing is, is you need that point. Well, I don't care which one of the points you use. You could use either of the two points that are on the graph um, when you're plugging that in. You have two points, use either of the points. So you're going to use that point slope form, that y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Again, this was in the lines and functions review. You've already done this um, in those review packets. And then once you're in the slope point slope form, you want to change it into the slope intercept form, which is y equals mx plus b. So let's give this a try. It says find the equation of the secant line through the point negative 2, 4, and the point 2, negative 2. So if we're given two points, the first thing we need to do is we want to find that slope. So let's find the slope. But remember, if you want to find the slope, the formula for slope is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So in this case, we're going to do the y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. The second y value, and it doesn't matter which one you do in, in all order, so the second y value is negative 2, and then we have to subtract off the first y value, which would be 4. The second x value was 2, and we have to subtract off the first x value, which is negative 2. Again, I want you to look at the points and make sure they correspond. So the negative 2 is above the 2, and the 4 is above the negative 2. We're perfect there. Okay. I apologize if you can hear my four-month-old puppy squeezing her toy in the background. So on top is negative 2 minus 4, which would be negative 6. And on bottom is 2 minus negative 2. Be very careful with that. Uh, you're subtracting a negative. Changes to addition. That would be a 4. So if I simplify this, I'm going to end up with negative 3 halves. Again, this is my slope of my line. So that was the first step was to find the slope. Step two is to use the formula y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1, the point slope formula. Well, we can use either of the points in this um, that we've been given. We've been given two points, negative 2, 4, and 2, negative 2. It doesn't matter which one of those points you use. I'm probably going to use the first one just because it's the first one. I don't know. It doesn't really matter. So I'll do y minus my first y value, which is 4 equals m, that slope we just found was negative 3 halves, times x minus that x value of that first point, which was negative 2. Okay, I'm going to remember that when I subtract a negative, that same thing as adding a positive, and then I'm going to distribute that negative 3 halves to both of those terms. So I have y minus 4 equals, well, there'd be negative 3 halves times x, which would be negative 3 halves x, and then I have a negative 3 halves times a positive 2. Negative 3 halves times a positive 2, put that into your calculator and simplify it, you end up with a negative 3. 
So right now I have y minus 4 equals negative 3 halves x minus 3. I'm going to add 4 to both sides. When I add 4 to both sides, I end up with the equation of the line y equals negative 3 halves x plus 1. So that would be the equation of what's called the secant line, the line that goes through those two points. How do we know that's right? Well, we could quite simply check by plugging both of these x and y values in and making sure they're correct. For instance, if I plug in negative 2, negative 3 halves times negative 2, which would be a positive 3, positive 3 plus 1 would be 4, and I get that y value. If I plug in 2, negative 3 halves times 2, negative 3 halves times 2 would be a negative 3, negative 3 plus 1 would be negative 2, and that's my y value. So it works for both of the points. We know this is the equation of the secant line through those two points.